There's breaking news in the wake of yesterday's gun policy conference at the White House. CNN is reporting that his remarks derailed some carefully laid out White House plans to roll out some different proposals. Here's a sample of what the president had to say. Now, this is not a popular thing to say in terms of the NRA, but I'm saying it anyway. I'm going to just have to say it. But you can't buy, I mean, think of it. You can buy a handgun. You can't buy one. You have to wait till you're 21. But you can buy the kind of weapon used in the school shooting at 18. I think it's something you have to think about. I can say that the NRA is opposed to it. And I'm a fan of the NRA. I mean, there's no bigger fan. I, I'm a big fan of the NRA. They want to do it. These are great people. These are great patriots. They love our country. But that doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. It doesn't make sense that I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun, but I can get this weapon at 18. I don't know. So I was just curious as to what you did in your bill. We, you don't address we didn't, it? We didn't address it, Mr. President. Look, I think you know we, why? Because you're afraid of the NRA, right? No, not an issue. Dana Lash, the spokesperson for the National Rifle Association. You remember, may remember she was in the center of some pretty fierce debate last week at the CNN Town Hall in Florida. I spoke to her earlier tonight. Dana, in that meeting yesterday, the, the president seemed to express support for, for raising the age for purchasing certain guns from 18 to 21, as well as the Manchin-Toomey bill, even taking guns in certain circumstances without due process, which is obviously, due process is, is something we hear a lot from the NRA. Do you, does the NRA feel betrayed by the president? Well, there was a lot of stuff discussed during this meeting, and I don't think any of it really made for good policy to keep our kids safe. And with regards to increasing age restrictions, uh, purchasing long guns, this is something that the NRA opposes because it that's doesn't. A, that's a no go. I, I won't. I. It's a no-go. Yeah, there's no point in, in, in punishing millions of, of young adults for something that they didn't do. I mean, I want to be quite clear what it is we're discussing. We're talking about putting their liberty on the chopping block and holding them responsible for the incompetency of the government. That That's their, it's the government's responsibility. We had 45 missed calls, uh, two missed FBI tips. The murderer called the Broward Sheriff Department himself and said, I am a danger. The family members called, neighbors called. It's not these law Americans, they didn't get this call. Um, so it's it's unfathomable to me to think that they're responsible and they should be paying the price for this. And not to mention Anderson, too. I mean, we have to address you know, all of these politicians who for decades have ignored this huge mental health crisis that we have in the United States that I hope that we can have a genuine so, discussion on because it's truly, it's I mean, truly a problem. If President Obama had said, you know what, I kind of believe in taking the guns first and, and then going through due process second... I would imagine the NRA would have spoken out incredibly strongly about that, as would many Republicans. Uh, again, I guess, uh, just officially, do, do does the NRA feel betrayed by this president? I mean, he's, he's due process is something I hear you and the NRA talk about all the time, and understandably, um, this president just said, right. you know what, due process comes second, take, take the guns. That's the fear of so many gun owners in the NRA. Right. And well, and it is. I mean, it is. It's a concern. And we want to make sure that we're just not stripping constitutional rights from people without making sure that they have their day in court. I mean, that's one of the things that NRA leadership stressed to the president Sunday when they met with him for lunch that, look, this is a cornerstone of America. We have to respect people's due process. Uh, and we can also do that while keeping everyone safe. Now, where it concerns, you know, previous president, the previous president, former President Obama, they definitely did have a very different approach. And we know that former President Obama did not. He did not even come close to thinking as President Trump does uh, on, for instance, you know, national reciprocity or a number of other issues. I mean, he was he was pretty clear in that. But, but, but I if, think if, the response would have been the same. So if the president continues down this road, uh, continues to want to raise the age of 21, fights for that, fights for bump stocks, fights for uh, uh, for eliminating bump stocks, um, you know, fights for, fights for all the things he talked about in that meeting, even taking guns, worrying about due process later. What's the message from the NRA to him on that in terms of what's going to happen in the voting booth? Well, we've made it clear where where the NRA has made it clear where they stand in, in terms of you know where we are with with increasing the age. I mean, it just doesn't you know it just doesn't make sense to to punish people to do that. I mean, I lived on my own before I was twenty one years old, and I can't imagine 
not, you know, in my mind, Anderson, I'm like nine feet tall and I weigh 500 pounds, but in reality, I'm five, six and I weigh a buck 25. I will be easily overpowered. And I can't imagine living by myself and not having an ability to defend myself. And there are millions of young adults that age that are in that same predicament. It doesn't make any sense to punish them for the failures of government. But one thing that, that the president has talked about um, and that I like hearing and that a lot of members of the NRA, they like hearing as well, is, is has to do with uh, school safety and and, and whether or not teachers want to be armed. And I know that there are a lot of media reports. They say, well, Trump is talking about mandatory arming of teachers, which I, he's not. And I, I, I think it's unfair to that. portray it that yeah. way. He's. I, mean, I, I have. I, I, I've read some of this. I read some of the stories on air. There were a couple of stories on air written that uh, I shared. Yeah, no, I mean, he's saying, like, look, I mean, it's that, teachers who want to do it, to, teachers who have yeah. a skill for it, who want to uh, receive yes. more training. Yes, and if parents and schools determine that that's, if they determine that that's best for their school district, then they have the freedom and the sovereignty to make that choice for their district. Uh, and that's encouraging. This is something, the NRA School Shield Program uh, is something Wayne LaPierre talked a lot about. Right. He was really ridiculed when he first discussed uh, really hardening schools. Uh, but now this is something every Everyone, thankfully, is talking about. We live me, in an era where it seems that evil can go unaccounted for. we got to protect our kids and teachers. Let, let me just try this one more time, because I've asked you if you feel betrayed, if the NRA, NRA feels betrayed, if the president should be worried about the NRA. It does feel like you are, uh, you know, with, with respect, going out of your way to give the president a, you know, a wide berth here and not go after him or not threaten him in, in any way, which I have to feel like if this was another president or a Democratic president saying these things, there would be some warning shots from the NRA or, you know, some red flags raised from the NRA saying, look, do not go down this road. I don't think that anybody, just speaking for me personally for a second, anyone who knows me for any length of time, and particularly during the primary, would ever accuse me of going easy on anybody. Um, but the thing is, is I can't react, and I don't think NRA members can react to something that hasn't happened yet. So um, you think it's just talk really, from I mean, him. we did come out. Maybe just talk. It could be. I mean, I, I think he's just entertaining both sides. I think he's listening to see what both sides have to say. He does tend to agree with the last person he has spoken to, if it's, you know, Dianne Feinstein or, or, or Republican. Uh, but you don't believe that he really wants to raise the age of 21. Or you believe maybe he does, but other people will, will influence him not to do that. I mean, you're, you're not manning the ramparts at this point because you don't think it's necessarily going to be something the White House is pushing for. Yeah, they, I mean, because right now they're just, it seems that they're, they're just in a discussion phase, and which is good. And I hope that they would, I hope that they would be talking to everyone and really hearing uh, what voters are thinking about this. And they are, their representatives and senators are saying, I mean, that's what he's supposed to right. do. I mean, that's what his, his job is. And I was glad to see it on TV, but, um, and just kind of getting ideas and seeing what he likes and what he doesn't like. Um, but we'll, you know, we'll react. I mean, we, the NRA okay. has already made it clear in terms of uh, increasing the age, and we'll wait and see what else comes out. Remember, there, there are more of these listening session. So, so let's, this is just the first one. Let's see what else is said. All right, Daniel Ash, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Anderson. All right, stay with us in a very busy night. A uh, conversation with a Florida Republican congressman who was at the televised White House meeting, uh, who now favors a ban on assault-style weapons. That's ahead. We have to do something.